Welcome back to Discrete Mathematics. Today we're going to take a look at combinations with repetition. So we did combinations without repetition earlier, which was just n choose r. But in this case, when we have n objects and we want to select r of them with replacement, it's going to be n plus r minus 1 choose r. And I'm going to give you an intuitive explanation why, hopefully, and with the following example, I'll also give you another explanation intuitively, so you'll have two different angles to see this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, in our example, n is equal to 4 and r is equal to 3. So we have four objects here. We're just going to call it 1, 2, 3, and 4. And what we're going to do is we're going to select one of them. So for our, for our first one we're selecting, we're going to take 2, and we're going to put 2 into a bin here. Okay, so we selected 2, so when we select things with combinations, we kind of cross it out and say, okay, we can't take this again. But we can take it again, so we have to add 2 back. Okay, now this time we take, let's take 4 next, so we put 4 in there, we're going to cross it out, but because we took 4 out, we have to add it back in because 4 gets replaced. Okay, so then let's take 4 again. So there we go. We selected 2, 4, and 4. So there we have it. We selected 3 objects from 4 with repetition. So what we really did here is out of 5 total objects, we chose 3. So this is equal to 5 choose 3. Now you're saying, hold on a second, but if I take 1 first and this 2 right here becomes a 1 instead, it's a different set. Not necessarily. Um, the intuition here is that you're just replacing and you're filling in an empty spot for whatever the first one you chose is, and then you're filling an empty spot for whatever the second is. And of course, when we choose the third one, we don't have to add a new slot because we're done. So that is one intuition of what we're doing here. So you can see that this is 5 choose 3. If we put in our, sorry, this should be 6 choose 3. If we plug in our formula here, we would get 4 plus 3 minus 1 choose 3, which is just equal to 6 choose 3. So that's the intuition here. Now, what can we do? Well, we can say, okay, suppose we have a donut shop with 20 different kinds of donuts. So, you know, you have chocolate glazed, chocolate, the Boston cream. There's tons of different donuts. Um, but we want to select 12 different donuts to take home. So really what we're doing here is we're listing out, okay, we have type 1, we have type 2, we have type 3, all the way up to type 19 and type 20. We do the same thing as before. We say, okay, I want type two. So we put two in our bin, we cross it out, and then we add an extra slot for two so we can take it again. So we have n is equal to 20. We have r is equal to 12 because we want 12 different donuts. So we get 20 plus 12 minus one, choose 12, which is just equal to 31, choose 12. So that's one way of looking at these types of problems. Another way is this way, where we say, okay, x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to 7. All of these are greater or equal to 0. How many positive integer solutions are there to this equation? So what we have this time is we have three different bins, and we're going to call them x1 x2 and x3 and we want to put seven objects into these bins so we could put this one there that one there um, we're going to fill x2 up with those two and x3 will get in these three so this will be 2 plus 2 plus 3 is equal to 7 so you're saying, okay, wait, why isn't this just 3 times 3 times 3 times 3? So it would be 3 to the 7, because each circle has, an, has a way of going into 7 different containers. 
Well, that's permutations for one, and all of these integers, they're indistinguishable, which means they're all identical. So you remember the multinomial theorem, where we have like north and east, and we have to divide by the amount of east factorial and n factorial. It's the same idea. So instead, what we're going to do is introduce uh, this other intuitive notion of, okay, here's seven objects, three, four, five, six, seven, and I want three bins. So to make three bins, all I need to do is insert two lines anywhere. So in this case, we have x1, x2, and x3. So x1 has 2, x2 has 3, and x3 has 2. Okay, that's not bad. Um, so what if we want one of the bins to have 0? Then we just put this line here. So this is x0. And sorry, this should be x1. And this bin x3 can be here. And then x2 can have all 7. So that's also a possibility. So what are we really doing here? Well, really, we're taking, how, how many dividers do we need? To get three bins, we need two dividers. So we're actually working with eight different spots. Sorry, nine different spots. And then we just put our dividers into two of those spots. So this is one plus four plus two. Or we can put our dividers in these two spots. And this is just 7 plus 0 plus 0. So you take the amount of dividers you need, which is going to be n minus 1, and then you just put them in the extra n minus 1 slots you added. So for this equation, if we take n plus r minus 1 choose r, it's a good idea first to tell us more generally which ones are x and or which ones are n and which ones are r. So the general solution is that x1 plus x2 all the way up to xn is equal to r. We'll have n plus r minus 1 choose r solutions where all of the x's are greater or equal to 0. So in this case specifically, we just have 3 plus 7 minus 1 choose 7 solutions which is equal to 9 choose 7, which is the same thing as saying, okay, I have seven objects here, but I need two dividers, so I'm going to add two more options, and I'm going to pick two of them to be dividers. So we know that this is equal to 9 choose 2 by the symmetry property, so this is the same way as saying, okay, I just chose two of my nine objects to be dividers. So that's the difference here. All right, let's do something a little bit more challenging that wasn't in the first time I did this video. Right after this quick example here with a word problem, how many ways can we put 10 identical balls into six distinct bins? Well, this is the same thing as saying that x1 plus x2 all the way up to x6 is equal to 10 because this right here is the total balls which is like the total numbers, and this right here are the bins, six distinct bins. So this is just 6 plus 10 minus 1 choose 10, which is just equal to 15 choose 10. Or 15 choose 5, because we need 5 dividers to get 6 different bins. So that was a word problem. I rushed through that a little bit, but it follows the exact same argument as before. So here's something I didn't do in the original video, was when one of our conditions has to be greater than another number. So x3 has to be greater than 1. So what this really means is that x3 has to be greater than or equal to 2. So these are the same thing. I'm saying it has to be greater than 1, so it can be greater or equal to 2. Okay, so let's start up here and say, let's, let's convert this to a different type of problem. Let's, instead of having objects in a row, 
let's make shelves of objects. So we have a shelf x1, a shelf x2, and a shelf x3. And I have nine objects to put on these shelves. In fact, let's just say they're books. So these are going to be our books. So the shelf three has to have at least two books. So we're going to put two books on the shelf. So what do we have left? Well, we now have seven books left to distribute between these three shelves. So really, this problem right here is actually just x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to 7, where all of our x's are greater than 0, greater or equal to 0, which we know is just the same thing as 927 from the previous example. So here's the question, well, how do we do that algebraically? So let's do this algebraically here. I'm just going to uh, copy the question. x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to 9, where x3 is greater than or equal to 2. Okay, what we're going to do is make a substitution. We're going to say x3 prime is equal to x3 minus 2, so that way x3 prime is going to be greater or equal to 0. So what we get is we get x1 plus x2 plus, well, hold on, we have to substitute x3 in. So x3 is the same thing as x3 prime plus 2. So x3 prime plus 2 is equal to 9. So we just substituted in x3 prime plus 2 equals 9 because we want to shift this 2 here to a 0. So we made the substitution possible. And now we just use some algebra here. So x1 plus x2 plus x3 prime is going to equal to 7 because we just put the 2 to the other side. And then we just find the solutions for this one because all of our xi's are now greater than 0, which we know is just 9 choose 7. Or 9 choose 2 if you look at it from a divider way. So that really is just combinations with repetition. It seems challenging at first, and it can be challenging because there's different ways of looking at it. There's balls and bins. You can always do that way. Or you can do books on shelves. You can do the integer solutions. And when you get to discrete math 2 and cover inclusion exclusion, you can put upper bounds on those inter integer solutions too. So we can say that x3 has to be less than 9. But that won't be covered now. Uh, next video will be a video with tons of practice problems on combinations with repetitions, just regular combinations and permutations. So if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below, or you can check out trevtutor.com and there's more stuff there. Uh, we also have a subreddit reddit.com slash r slash trevtutor and you can also post questions there and i will be there responding so as always have a great day and i hope to see you guys next time